Hello everybody, and welcome back. Today's episode, as I mentioned in the last one, we're going after this drone surveillance. Uh, it's not long after I recorded the last episode. Eve here is something I feel I can safely do in bulk and not have to worry too much about. Um... I, I, I have... I have high hopes that we can take on this uh, drone uh, surveillance, considering we did it in a Dragoon. That is what I've based all of this off of, that we've managed everything else so far in the Dragoon. Well, not everything else, but a lot of the other stuff we've done in the Dragoon. So it just feels a bit strange that we're not really able to do it in... Um. Ow. <laughs> the Arbitrator? Mostly because it's, well... The Arbitrator is the bigger drone ship. Launches bigger drones. In theory has bigger tank, as much as we've kind of shown it kind of doesn't. Ow. Okay, these light light missile batteries might drive us out. Those hurt a lot. I honestly don't know if we can sustain taking too many of those hits. Yeah, there's armor warning. Let's turn on the overload, see if we can get it up high enough. I kind of wish I could overload the drones and make them deal more damage. Uh, this is actually a Tech 2 armor repair. But the thing is, it's a small armor repair. We're in a medium ship. We have much more armor than what this thing repairs. Um, with overload, we might tank the next hit. I need, I need to turn off the overload now. The armor rep is getting a little too damaged. Oh god, we're not in range to target those anymore. Oh no. Oh, this is bad. At the very least, we're out of their range, but <laughs> this is kind of bad. Our low drone control range is really biting us in the butt here. Um, at the very least, we'll be in a uh, slightly better position to take on these batteries. Ow, ow, ow. Thing is, it is only about four cycles to repair that damage done, but that's the problem. <laughs> we need to get those four cycles in before they fire again. Which we can't really, we get about three in. Plus, there's the damage from the other things, which, well, it isn't a lot. It is still a fair bit to our armor wrapper. Um, now, I'm kind of okay with taking a bit of damage from this, because even our Dragoon had problems with this. Um, the Dragoon has one major advantage over um, our Arbitrator. And that's, the Dragoon has a higher base capacitor, so it got by with, you know, f fewer modules used up for its uh, uh, cap recharge. Because it just has higher base capacitor where it's a uh, energy neutralizing ship. They always tend to have quite a bit higher base capacitor than other ships. This is an electronic warfare ship. But it's not an energy neutralizing ship, which is the problem. Now let's get our drones on that last missile battery. And from there on out, this site should be pretty easy. Uh, if I remember correctly, rogue drones, you want to be hitting them with kinetic damage, which is our Caldari drones. So we're probably going to leave our uh, uh, Vespas out. I still really love this little guy. Oh, they're they're shooting at our Vespas. I just noticed that. 
<laughs> they haven't really been doing too much to them, so I didn't really notice. Clear out these closer ones first, I guess. The little uh, elves, they're just they're just so cute how they swim through space. They're like little bugs with a thruster up their butt, but little bugs. <laughs> They're not quite as hateable as uh, New Eden's little bees, so... Not sure how many people will even get what I'm referring to. Um, I am actually kind of hopeful, though. Uh, this, is kind of off, this is kind of back on topic of the drone site here. I'm kind of hopeful that we'll get a sentient spawn. Uh, sentient is basically the name of the drone faction ships. So, that was within 35, I guess he's not anymore. Um, we're not really going to be able to control our drones at this range. So they're probably just going to shoot at things until everything within 35 is dead. And then, go back at it. Um, let's close our orbit in a little bit. Because we were at 25, so... Cause yeah, right now all our drones are just idle because our control range is only 35 kilometers. And for some reason we're 50 some kilometers away from what I want to orbit. Um... Let's drop the range into 15. Jeez. Did I somehow double click off in space? I was just flying in a straight line that whole time? If so, I feel like a bit of an idiot. <laughs> I should have only been 20 away from whatever bunker I uh, set to orbit. So let's actually go back to a 20. Let's clear out the, these nuker albums and get the next wave to spawn. Hopefully we don't sp it doesn't spawn right on top of us. Because the, as the Dragoon showed off, um, yeah, they, they can slow you down a lot. Rogue drones like their webifiers. Now, hopefully, we can clear out this first uh, nuker and then switch off to the next one before he's out of our range. Looks like that isn't going to happen, though. Bummer. Um... Looks like our drones are going to sit idle a little bit longer. Nothing much we can do about that, though. I accidentally drug him far too far off the site. And it was my own fault. I will fully admit that. All I can really hope now is that he comes back. I mean, he's moving at a decent pace. The only problem is I'm moving faster than him. Uh, little nuker album. Even they have little moving parts. Rogue drones have a lot of moving parts on them. These little pinchy claws. And you'll also note on all rogue drones that none of them have distinct weapons exactly. Like on this guy, this is where he'll fire out. But he do they don't have turrets, as if you know, as you'd expect from even. Just a Vespa. Actually, it's pretty close to what you get off a of Vespa. Keep forgetting that. But a lot of rogue drones don't even have what he has. So they just tend to fire out of themselves, and it's kind of weird and cute. Um, now, if I had a mining ship over here, or if I could actually fly a mining ship, 
the only mining ship we can fly is the Venture, and the Venture isn't great. But I'd probably be over here grabbing some Dark Arcor right now. Or some ice. Uh, if we could mine ice, our Plex would come in no time. Because if we could mine ice, we'd already be Omega, and we wouldn't be here mining ice. But um, ice actually sells for quite a lot. So if you're an Omega clone and feel like making Isk rather quickly, uh, ice. Come to an empty low sec system like this and just start raking in ice. You do have to be careful and at the first sign that another player is around, I would advise packing up and docking as quickly as you can. Mining barges tend to warp really slowly so it's generally a good idea to be pre-aligned somewhere, whether that's a safe spot or a station, and just be ready to run. Now this is actually going at a decent speed now that we've got our orbit correct. Um... Clearing out these destroyers, then we're going to work on the cruisers. Everything should stay within our orbit, and we're moving at a good enough speed that most of their turret shots are going to miss us. But on top of that, you know, we are also within close enough vicinity that we're outside of where they should spawn, I think. I'm not too familiar with drone sites. Uh, they're not actually the most common site to even see. Uh, the region of space that my main character lives in is actually Sanchez space. So I'm much more familiar with Sanchez sites. And the sites do change. Like, they change up, not drastically, but enough to vary them from faction to faction. So... If someone is flying around in Angel Cartel space, their sights might be different than the ones we're running into here, per se. Might actually head to Angel Cartel space at some point just to show that off. Or some other faction of space. Could probably get to Sanchez owned pirate space pretty easily. Um, well, I say that. I know where to go. Uh, you need more of the domain region closer to the region of Melsec called Providence. But there tends to be a lot of people around there, so might not be the best idea. And uh, for reference, anyone who might want to go check out that area of space, the one I'm referring to is uh, this little area here. Uh, Jacobmich, or whatever. It's basically right on the border of Providence. Providence starts, like, right here. So... You want to be careful about that. My best suggestion is if you're in the area, just don't shoot anybody. Be a good little pilot and don't PvP in that area and you'll be fine. Um, over here should also have... Sanchez Rats, I think, think in the Derelict re region. I could be wrong about that. I might actually go check that out at some point. We are uh, nowhere near there, though. It's quite far away for us. And cruisers don't really move that quickly. So, welcome to what ratting is. Um, we're basically just ignoring our ship for the most part. Because it will handle itself. The drones will take care of whatever we need them to take care of which is the advantage of the drone ships. Now, if you're an Omega and flying the Vexor Navy issue, you have the one big advantage of you have five heavy drones. Now, heavy drones are battleship-sized drones. The Vexor Navy issue is a cruiser. It's launching basically a battleship's worth of DPS in drones which gives it about 500, 600, sometimes even 800 DPS, depending on your drone skills. That is a lot. And it basically means that 
while you're sitting and ratting, identically to how I'm doing it here, you're just crushing the dro the uh, NPCs, which allow you to get much higher uh, payouts than what we're getting here. Oh, these guys are actually faster than me. They're going to catch up. It's going to take them a little bit, but oh no, that's not good. That's not good. <laughs> Our max speed is 467 now. That's not good. That's not good. <laughs> We're going to start taking a lot more hits now. We need to start getting these drones off of us. Problem is, they're moving so fast, especially when they turn their prop mods on, that uh, our drones have a hard job keeping up with them. Now we should reaccelerate to our proper speed until this other drone decides to web us or something. If it's okay, it's not going to. Cool. And now we just let the drones carry on. Um, so basically with the, uh, the surveillance here, we had a bit of a panic moment at the very beginning, but other than that, we're pretty much fine. We have nothing really to worry about. Um, all we have to do is just kind of watch out for the frigates, clear out the frigates manually. Because our drones will target cruisers. Where there are medium-sized drones, they will target cruisers first. Then they'll move to other targets. Likely larger targets. Uh, light drones will auto-target to frigates first. And then move up to destroyer, cruiser, uh, bow cruiser, battleship, dreadnought, carrier, supercarrier, uh, titan. Sorry, I just had to take a quick drink there. Um, but mediums will basically, if I remember right, they go cruiser, battle cruiser, battleship, uh, dreadnought carrier, super carrier, titan, frigate destroyer on their uh, targeting chain. So your medium drones will auto-target to a titan over auto-targeting to a frigate if I remember correctly. I could be wrong. It has been a long time since I used the medium drones. <laughs> oh, sorry, I had to yawn there. Uh, it's rather late at night when I'm recording this. Um, you can either take it as it's late at night or early in the morning. Because according to the eve time, it's 6 in the morning. According to my time, it's 3 in the morning. Um, I probably should have been in bed like an hour ago, but I knew I had to get some recording done. And I have ins a bit of insomnia. I'm yawning, but I don't feel tired. It's great. It's always great when that happens. Um... Hopefully, though, this will go smoothly and we'll make a decent little chunk of isk. We are clearing through this faster than the Dragoon did, which is really nice. Um, partly because we just have more appropriate drones. Um, because I think I was using our Acolytes and uh, Infiltrator against these. I should have really been using the uh, Hornets and Vespa. Let's get these frigates locked up. Because we really don't want to be webbed. much as they're gonna close in as soon as they decide to turn on their prop mods which is bad for us very bad for us especially where these are at oh these are actually advanced okay you can tell because their bounty is much higher than regular uh, frigate drones 
and we're dealing much less damage. Excuse me. Though, this still shouldn't really be a problem. They're all matching each other's velocity, so... We should just basically have to slowly pick our way through it. I should probably actually reorganize my drones so that I'm carrying uh, two flights of medium drones, one uh, one Amar, one Kaldari, and then two flights of light of one Amar, one Kaldari, so I can hot swap between uh, drones if I absolutely have to. And they are shooting one of our drones. Um, so far it's holding out kind of fine, but I'm still going to call it back. Don't want to risk losing a drone while we're out here. Yeah, there's a one million isk tick. Um, so at that rate, if we could reliably do these sites over and over again, we would be making roughly about three mil an hour. So that's basically a one plex per hour, basically. So not really the best isk per hour income, but we're getting there. That would only be 500 hours to, until we had uh, our game time, or our mega time. So, you know. Oh, we actually can't target him onto there. So he'll start working on that one, I guess. Hopefully we get a chance to uh, put all of them onto it. Yes, we do. Now, we're going to have to be careful about calling our drones back right now. Because they're right on the edge of our range. Which is a little sad for us. Um, we're going to let this keep going. This is actually going to be a bit of a long episode. We're just doing one site. Jeez. It should have clued into me that it's been 20 minutes because we got a... Uh, Bounty payout, those come out every 20 minutes. After uh, your first kill, you'll get your bounty payout 20 minutes after that. So uh, this this will probably be a bit of a long episode. Might actually just abruptly end partway through this and do another episode after. I don't know. And for storage, I'm probably going to have to cut this episode in half, but... Or at least cut bits out that I don't think are very important. Ah, uh, there we go. We've almost got through this drone. It, this would go a lot faster if these weren't elite frigates. We can't even target that last one. Uh, let's lock him up. Watch his health. So you it's going down so much faster, because we're actually able to deal damage to it. Uh, and we're not really able to deal damage to um, the, these elite drones, just because they their resistances are just that much higher. They should still be weak to kinetic damage. I think it's actually kinetic explosive they're weakest to. I could be wrong there. I just remember Kinetic being one of them, which is why I'm using the Vespas here. Um, might be Kinetic Thermal. I don't know. Might be Kinetic EM. I I really, I really don't know. Um, let's see if this guy's convenient. No, no he isn't. Um, I'm actually going to check something here. Yeah, okay. <laughs> He has a medal for being part of an alliance that fielded a team during the alliance tournament. Which, uh, I think this should come out before the weekend. Um, just gonna give a little heads up that the alliance, the EVE Online alliance tournament is actually going on, uh, as I'm recording this. Well, it's happening next weekend. Like, basically the first official rounds of the alliance tournament. 
the feeder rounds for the weekend that had just passed at the time of recording this. And yeah, I am I am quite impressed with how things went. I'm just I, I'm mostly poking out there if you want to uh, watch the Alliance tournament and see basically some of the most you know confident PvPers at the very least going at it from all the big alliances and even some of the smaller ones well all the big alliances but a fair fair few of the big alliances a few of them have already been knocked out and a few of them didn't enter but uh feel free to watch you should be able to find it at uh, ccp.twitch.com or twitch.tv twitch.tv or whatever it's ccp at twitch you know on twitch and that should be that should find you just just google ccp twitch you'll find it um, I don't know Twitch URLs. They're weird. I don't go on Twitch often. Fun fact, I actually, I actually used to stream on Twitch a little bit. Uh, I used to stream TF2. Yeah, this is a long episode. This is probably going to be a good half hour episode. Um, episodes of this might start going up to about 40 minutes eventually. I'm not sure how I'm going to store that, but... You know, you might just cut it in half and store 20 minutes one place, 20 minutes another. Uh, nothing totally wrong with that. Now, I I don't really remember the amount we're supposed to make from this. I remember it not being great. I do remember it has a chance of a uh, spawn, which is kind of nice. A faction spawn. Oh, it's the uh, Eve Uni page here doesn't actually say. Let's see here. Okay, we have one more wave to go, I believe. Yeah, we're... Oh, bugger. I actually have them targeting the wrong ship. We want to take out these drones. Which, once again, are elites. Ah. <laughs> but the, uh... The cruisers are likely the trigger to spawn the next wave. Which could actually have an overseer cruiser, which I am... I want it to have one, because that will be so nice for us. Oh, leg spike. It'd be so nice for us to get an overseer spawn, especially a cruiser-sized one, because, oh, that loot could be nice. It, overseer spawns are faction spawns, so it'd be a, a sentient viral infector, possibly, or some other uh, overseer rat. If one of those shows up, people are going to just assume I'm post-commentating this, but I assure you I am not. I am... Oh! Oh! Oh god! Oh, we, we lost a Vespa. <laughs> that is what happens when you don't pay attention. Let's just launch a, uh... Hobgoblin. back the Vespa. That Hobgoblin's not really going to be doing much, but... Hey, it's something. I don't even know if it's managed to hit the thing yet. Let's actually pull back all of our Kaldari drones. Let's just pull back our drones in general for now, and just relaunch with Galante Focus. Because I think... Uh, did, no, we didn't quite lose another one.
I I really apologize for how long this is taking. Um, this would probably already be over if we were in a more proper ship, but we're not because I'm bad and thought that we could actually do well with the Arbitrator because I've done well with the Arbitrator with proper skills, but that's the important factor. I've had my skills trained up higher. I think we'll just use the Hobgoblins to finish this, because A, they're cheaper to replace as much as all of these are cheap to replace, and B, they actually seem to be dealing more damage than the Vespas were. So I think it's actually thermal damage you want against rogue drones, not kinetic. It is probably kinetic thermal, just with a thermal uh, base. It also helps that the hobgoblins are hitting the frigates much easier. So we might actually chew through cruisers a little slower, but we'll chew through the frigates a lot faster. So at that point, it's really what one do you want to take care of first? If you want to take care of the uh, frigates first, then you want... Light drones. If you want to take care of the cruisers first, you want medium drones. If you're in a Vex or Navy issue, you want just heavies and watch them go. Um, yeah, I'm a little sour at how good the Vex or Navy issue is. I think even the Vexer would be... Well, the Vexer is just better for ratting than uh, the Arbitrator is. Because look at the Vexer here. Same drone bonus. Only it's just, you know, same drone bonus, same slot layout. A little less drone capacity, but what does that matter, really? It can also fit four turrets, instead of being limited to two turrets. Which gives it quite the significant advantage when it comes to ratting and such. Because that gives you the room to fit four turrets, and it also has a damage bonus to those four turrets. The Vexor Navy issue basically drops that turret damage bonus for a drone tracking bonus. Which, as you could guess, is pretty significant. Let's lock these guys up. And I actually think even our... <laughs> oh, I've been using the wrong drones this whole time. Does it show I haven't done much with rogue drones ever? Even, like, I started my EVE career as a mission pilot. Even then, I would avoid rogue drone missions because rogue drones just were generally not worth fighting. Because, well, they don't drop loot. And the salvage from their ships isn't worth a lot. So you're generally just best off um, avoiding rogue drones. Now, I wouldn't say that's totally true when it comes to ratting. With missions, yeah, it's, if you can avoid them, do avoid them. But y you might as well still do their missions if it's not too much of a pain. Because they tend to be easy to blitz and you'll be through them in no time. With ratting, if we can manage to get this uh, faction spawn, we could be in for a lot of isk. If we could get a sentient drone damage amplifier, that's a good 200 mil right there. That is a hefty chunk of isk for someone like us. If we could get really almost anything uh, sentient, we're in for a fair chunk of isk. I actually think I'm wrong about the drone damage amp. I think it's only about 100 mil these days. But still, that's a fair chunk of isk. We could probably at the very least double our isk if we get a sentient spawn. And if we get lucky enough with that sentient spawn, it might even drop a little chip. Uh, no, we didn't get it. We didn't get it. <laughs> Yeah, all these are just normal. 
very least we'll get a nice little chunk from uh, the battle cruisers. And we'll just kind of let our drones go wild here. I think just about everything is hurling a missile at us. Which does kind of hurt, especially where we're actually taking hits from something. I guess our uh, angular isn't the best. Well, it's more our transversal to a uh, few of them. The magic number for transversal is about 700, so that's part of our problem. We are a little slow. Um, optimally, you want to be moving at about a thousand meters per second to avoid all damage we might actually have to overload our armor repper again because we're not really clearing out the damage fast enough I think we have already cleared one cruiser though I could be wrong well, yeah we've definitely already cleared out one but Hopefully we won't need to overload the armor repper because this is a lot of heat damage to repair already. We can't really afford to have to uh, repair that again considering we already spent a fair bit of isk meaning that we only really made about 750,000 off of this site. Looks like this episode is probably going to go about 40 minutes. This is... I might actually just see about cutting out random parts I don't need from this episode. Because really all this has been is a lot of me just orbiting and talking. So... Uh, th this, this is low sec ratting in a nutshell. Um, this is the kind of thing that while you're doing it, you might as well do something else. Like, I know you can't see me, but here I am, picking up my phone and playing another game. Because, really, why would I stay focused on the ratting? It's doing it itself. So, I'm basically just doing up a daily thing on another game I've been playing. Can't do up the last stage of the daily thing, but I did up quite a few of them. And I just accept all my little rewards. Do 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 do. <laughs> because I I totally care about what we're doing here. Um, well, I do care, because it's, it's good isk, but... The problem is that, really, you've got nothing to do while you're doing this. Um, and this is actually a complaint that a lot of people have had, and CCP have been trying to fix and account for. Their latest way of doing that was something that was not well received, and if you've been following EVE Online's uh, community at all recently, you'll know that CCP just tried to pass through a nerf to carriers and supercarriers, basically nerfing their damage by about 20%. Because about the top 1-4% to 4 of the ratting populace brought in about 66% of the ratting income. That is a lot. Like, the entire, in a five day period, if I remember the numbers right, cruiser, Tech 1 cruisers, Navy cruisers, Tech 2 cruisers, that area brought in about 2 trillion isk all together all around New Eden. 2 trillion isk was brought into existence. At the same time, in that same 5 day period, carriers brought in 2.6 trillion isk. Supercarriers brought in nearly 3 trillion isk. 
as it was like 2.9 something if I remember right. I thought it was just 3, I forget which. Either way, that is a lot more ISK than these little cruisers have been. And a lot of the sites are full of cruisers and battle cruisers and battleships. In my opinion, capital ships really have no business fighting these NPCs, but they do because they kill them faster. And killing them faster means faster isk. Faster isk means you print more isk. Printing more isk means your isk actually is worth less. If people would slow down their isk printing and actually, you know, spend isk by blowing stuff up more often, they would, uh, kind of help fix the hyperinflation problem that CCP is trying to fix. Yep, there's the 40 minute mark. Um... So we've made roughly about 2 million isk this episode. Well, no, we've made 52 million isk. Actually, about 53 million. And still, very much thank you, uh, Shinju, should you see this episode. That is going to make my life moderately easier. Um, I actually wonder, uh, are there any Plex for sale out here? Yeah, I was searching the probe just to refresh myself on what it was. Yeah, they're being sold for 2.7. So basically, the amount of ISK we're going to need to make is 1.386 billion. We could buy about 20 Plex at the moment. <coughs> oh, excuse me. About 21 after the site's finished here. When we get our payment for the finishment of the site. But with that, and this incredibly long episode, I thank you all very much for watching. And I hope to see you again next time, where we will not be doing this again. See you all then.